but there's the difference. So you're going to have a nice oily film protecting your deck compared to nothing, just bare metal. How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you the importance of uh, undercoating your deck or at least cleaning it, uh, getting all the grass um, and all the uh, debris uh, clear from the top of your deck, scraping the underside and also undercoating it. So today I'm working on a Toro LX 465. I've taken the hood off and uh, just the air filter cover there and I've also gone ahead and pulled the deck off. This machine runs great. Uh, the only thing I have to do to it is uh, an oil change, uh, oil filter change, fuel filter change and then uh, we pulled the deck to uh, clean it, sharpen the blades, undercoat it, and uh, inspect all the pulleys and the belts and whatnot. So I've taken the deck off and I just put it up on a couple of sawhorses here. You guys can see that there's uh, a lot of uh, loose, dry grass on top. Uh, it's not really wet. After he's done cutting, he uh, stores this machine inside, so it's never been stored outside. Uh, you guys can see that the top of the deck looks to be in pretty good condition. So I've come over here and given the pulleys a little wiggle test, just uh, lifting them up and down to make sure that the bearings are good. And uh, all of the bearings are uh, in great condition. So uh, I'll flip this over and show you the underside. Before I do though, take notice that there's a little bit of rust on the front left side of the deck. So that's on the, uh, the front left side there. Okay, so here's the underside of the deck. You guys can see that uh, after a while the grass uh, starts to build up into these clumps and uh, even though it's dry to the touch, you guys can see it's just some dry grass here. Uh, once you pull this stuff up and uh, start getting under the bottom, you guys can see there's all sorts of rust here. So his deck is starting to rust through. Right now this is just surface rust, but if that was left uh, for another couple years, 100% that would have eaten right through. And I want you to take a look at right here. They got a big clump of grass built up right over there. And if we come over here, you guys can see it's the exact same spot where the rust is building up. So you guys can see there's all sorts of paint that's flaking off here. It's starting to rust here. Now again, that's just uh, some surface rust where the paints come off. But uh, all of that, my best guess, is because of all this right here. And if we start pulling some of this off, I guarantee there'll be some metal in behind. See, see how you guys can see the difference between this here, which is real dry, and then this here, which is real wet. You guys can see it's leaving green, green streaks on my uh, thumb there. So uh, basically what happens is the grass on the top is dry, but all this grass underneath holds the moisture and then uh, it just starts to rot out your deck. So the importance of uh, cleaning your deck, obviously, is to prevent your deck from rotting through. Because if your deck rots through, you'll have to buy another one. And uh, new, they could go anywhere from like $800 to $1,000, uh, fully assembled with all the pulleys and everything, and spindles and whatnot. But, uh, you know, if you were to find one used, chances are nobody's going to have a used uh, deck for uh, an LX425 Toro. So, again, Really important to scrape your deck and clean it at the end of the season. So I'm going to be using uh, just a couple uh, scraper tools and I'm going to scrape off uh, the majority of the uh, grass, the dried grass, the wet grass, get it all out of there. Uh, the top of the deck, I'll probably just uh, take the big vacuum to that. We got a five horsepower dirt hound here with a really long uh, tube on it. So I'll just uh, vacuum up all the dry, loose stuff. Once I have the bottom deck all scraped out, then I'll, I might power wash it, depending on uh, how bad it is. And then uh, once I have the deck all cleaned up and uh, scraped, we'll show you how to undercoat it. Okay, so I've got the uh, deck scraped out. Uh, didn't take that long. You guys can see we're starting to get uh, some chunks of uh, rust coming up here. Over here, that was that big patch right here. And I just wanted to show you guys that uh, right, right there, if you guys can get a good shot of that. It's actually starting to uh, rust through uh, and get into some real heavy pitting. Um, so if left, I'd say another year, this whole section um, of deck would have been completely rotted out and uh, he would have needed you know, a metal patch to go in there and we would have had to weld that up. So it's a good thing he brought it to us when he did. I just uh, came over here and pulled some of the pieces off and you guys can see there's uh, some pretty large chunks, that's that's deck. This is all your deck here, guys. So uh, again, here's the importance of uh, scraping your deck is after you let all this grass sit there, 
it retains all that moisture and it just starts eating away and uh, here's here's the thickest part you guys can see that's a good quarter inch chunk of uh, of deck that's that's come off here and uh, yeah so again you know if left uh, another year or two uh, this deck would have been uh, completely rotted through and it would have needed uh, welding repairs so what I'm gonna do now is uh, lift out all of this uh, you know these chunks of uh, grass and all this metal rust and whatnot and I'll probably hit this with the power washer just to uh, get some of the stuff that I couldn't scrape off you know some of the darker spots here where it's uh, thinner and uh, you know clean up these blades so that after it's uh, power washed I'll go ahead and remove these blades I'll sharpen the blades up you guys have seen me do that in other videos we uh, we use a uh, a sharpening stone and then we balance them afterwards so we're just in the process of uh, power washing the deck I got a little Simonized 2000 psi pressure washer here you guys can see it does a pretty good job gets all the uh, stuff off here I still got a hit up here okay so uh, we got the deck all cleaned up you guys can see big big difference but uh, again here's the importance of cleaning your deck so even though all that uh, grass up here was dry and you know I still got to get under there that's a big lump of you know dirt under there or whatnot but you guys can see that's all bare metal now. So uh, even though all this grass was dry, uh, there's bare metal that's showing uh, back here too. You know, the pressure washer just blasted that paint off. Okay, so I got the uh, deck on sawhorses inside my shop here because uh, it is starting to rain a little bit. And uh, I just got an old brush here uh, with a little cap to a container that I use just to, uh, you know, put the, the brush in. And uh, basically, I'm going to be using, we have some... Uh, Quick and easy, you can do it, uh, rust cure. This is Formula 3000, it's rust proofing. Basically this is just a rust inhibitor guys. Uh, we bought this because it was on sale. Uh, normally we use like a crown rust preventative or uh, sometimes a rust check. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you have uh, you know, some kind of uh, rust inhibitor spray. Now you guys are gonna wanna be really careful not to get any of this stuff on the belts because it's basically oil. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be spraying just a little bit where the bare metal is. We're not going to paint this because we don't have any uh, any like red paint that can match up to this and we don't want to just start slapping black paint all over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, rust cure here and I'm going to spray a little bit where all the bare metal is so you guys can see where any of the paint's chipped off. Uh, spots like this, here, here, and then all around the front. And uh, again, we're going to make sure not to get any on the belts and uh, any spots that are hard to reach, I'm going to use the brush just to work it in and uh, push it in, like I said, to the hard to reach areas. So I've gone ahead and uh, sprayed some down. You guys can see it leaves uh, a little oily uh, surface on the paint. So, uh, you know, just have a little rag here to uh, wipe up any of the excess that gets on the paint uh, because again, we don't want uh, to get this on the belt right we're trying to keep all this off the belt but you guys can see it's basically like an oil and uh, you know just that little bit if we push it all the way around you know it can coat a fairly significant surface we're just kind of blotting the surface just a little bit uh, trying to keep it away from the belts and by wiping up the excess you'll uh, limit the chances of your belt rubbing against it you know coming over here we're just taking our brush and uh, just pushing it into the hard to reach areas getting all of that bare metal covered. With this rust preventative on there, it won't rust. Uh, it'll keep all the, uh, the metal just like how it is. And uh, after, I'll uh, end up going along the front here. And like I said, I'll get uh, in behind here as well. And this is what your deck will look like, guys. You know, it'll have a little bit of a, a shine to it. You guys can see here, we've, uh, we've got all the bare metal spots nice and covered. And you can see there's a, a nice shiny coating on top of it. Now, you know, it's not as good as paint, obviously. But uh, the thing is, guys, you know, your paint is going to strip off of this thing eventually. And uh, as long as you do this, uh, undercoat your deck or, uh, you know, use rust preventative on your deck, you should never have to worry about your deck rotting through. So where all this paint is starting to come off here, you'll never have to worry about this section rotting out you know where there's an actual hole in your deck uh, because we're using this uh, rust preventative and uh, you know you guys can see I've went all along here all along the front we've got into the like I said the big spots there uh, we've got way back in here as well just uh, basic stuff guys like I said 
you know this is just a quick little video explaining how we do it so now um, this stuff really doesn't dry it's always going to have like a little uh, oily uh, surface to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this deck over and uh, show you how to undercoat the bottom okay so we got the uh, deck flipped up you guys can see that it's uh, it's dry now and uh, you guys can see here you know the rust is uh, starting to get kind of flaky you know where the metal on the deck is starting to uh, literally peel off and uh, again here's that section up here that I was telling about so you guys can uh, see you know here's some uh, smooth metal and then you get over here and you could see the pitting already starting to begin you know there's uh, still a little bit of uh, grass that remains on the deck uh, normally that's not an issue guys because uh, you know we've we've pressure washed it so the majority of the uh, big chunks are off and uh, now I use this stuff here crown rust preventative uh, instead of using the spray bottle we have an actual jug of rust preventative so I can uh, dump some out on here or I can dump some into that little uh, yellow plastic dish that you saw on the bottom here you guys can apply your rust preventative a lot more vigorously so you guys can just start slapping it in there uh, don't worry about grass sticking to the to the rust preventative uh, because as you saw grass is going to stick to the deck anyways so you might as well have a layer of protection in between the metal and the grass and uh, that'll prevent like I said any rot from happening you know uh, as I said guys a couple more years maybe maybe not even at the end of the season that could have been rotted through depending on uh, how wet a grass he cuts now I still have to take the blades off so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the blades off with my uh, impact gun and uh, get them sharpened and then I'm gonna undercoat this deck uh, and uh, basically, like I said, guys, you just dump some of that out on here, start brushing it in, and uh, the brush kind of helps the metal absorb the rust preventative a little better uh, versus just spraying it on uh, thick and just leaving it. Okay, so I got the two nuts off of the uh, blades now using my impact and a 15 16 socket, but here we go. So you guys can see all sorts of wet grass stuck to it, whereas the bottom side I've blasted with the hose so uh, before I balance it because if I sharpen this and I go to balance it and there's a big chunk of grass here but there's not a big chunk of grass over there uh, that's gonna you know affect the balance so if I level the blade and make sure that it's balanced so that each end are equal weight and then a big chunk of grass flies off that end is gonna be lighter than that end so what I gotta do is get this blade clean so I'll probably just take my scraper tool uh, scrape off the majority of the grass you know you're never gonna get like the real caked on stuff like that unless you uh, sandblasted it but uh, there's no real point because you know in after a couple cuts it's just gonna be covered in that stuff anyways so here's a clip of the uh, deck before you guys can see it's dry and rough and there's all sorts of rust on it again I just poured a little bit into that uh, cap there and I'm just gonna uh, brush it on nice and thick okay so here's a halfway look I guess we've started to brush it on so you guys can see, you know, it goes on pretty good. Here's a little dry section. And like I said, guys, we're just gonna, we're just gonna mash it in there. And uh, wherever there's holes, you see like there's holes here and there, and like there's holes over there. Uh, you guys wanna be careful not to put it on too thick. Like that's why I don't suggest just dumping the bottle. Because again, we have the deck upside down. So all of these holes, if I'm just dumping the rust preventative onto the deck, uh, it, there's a possibility that some of that could go through the holes and get onto the belt and I don't want to have to uh, you know take the belt off and clean it after I've already uh, installed the deck again so uh, like I said what I'm doing is just got a little bit in this uh, cap here and uh, we're just gonna brush it on you can put it on heavier in these spots where there are no holes and then uh, once you get up to the spots where there are holes like I said guys just take your time and uh, go a little bit slower but there's the difference so you're gonna have a nice oily film protecting your deck compared to nothing just bare metal which can rust so here it is guys uh, final product you guys can see we got everything undercoated now nice and coated um, you really don't have to worry about getting the edges here you know you guys can see that uh, there's bare metal all over here you don't have to worry about that because that's going to be scraping against the ground and the grass uh, while you're cutting so um, the basically just the friction from the grass is gonna wipe off that paint and it's gonna strip off all your undercoating so don't worry about that also you know if you're reaching around here with your hands you're gonna get uh, all sorts of uh, rust preventative on your hands too 
Uh, you really don't have to worry about getting this top section here either because again, same thing, it's going to be, uh, you know, against the ground, but uh, I did it anyways just lightly. And uh, that's it, guys. You guys can see that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of big clumps. Uh, there's not a lot of, uh, like, liquid on it because, uh, you know, I put just enough on. Uh, a little bit of that crown rust preventative, guys, goes a long way. You could use the, uh, the spray can, which I still have over there, but you're going to go through one or two cans because this rust... Uh, on the deck kind of absorbs some of the uh, the liquid and that's why I like doing the way that I do it because uh, I can pour some out and if I need more I can pour more out and you guys can see from the level that it was before compared to now I really didn't use that much but anyways uh, I got the blade sharpened so I'm going to uh, reinstall those and uh, then this deck is ready to be reinstalled onto the riding lawnmower and another thing that's uh, good to point out even with a pneumatic uh, impact gun uh, I still had a hard time getting uh, these nuts to come off of uh, to get the blades off so using a little bit of nickel anti-seize uh, just a little bit you know one little swipe uh, on the threads of where that nut is and by doing that you will ensure that a hundred percent your blades will come off every year if you're going to service this deck I've worked on some mowers that have never had the blades off uh, for you know the entire life of the machine so it could have been 10-15 years and uh, if those nuts seize on there you got to take a torch to them to heat them up to get them off and uh, Man, what a, what a job it is. So a little bit of nickel anti-seize, and the next year uh, that my customer brings this back to Eliminator Performance, I'll be able to take those blades off. And here's a little shot of uh, all the stuff that we pulled out of this deck. Um, this is all the dry stuff that was on the top, but, you know, underneath is uh, the heavier stuff that was uh, underneath. But you guys can see, you know, that's about... Uh, that's about a third of that can filled up. Yeah, that's quite a bit of stuff that we pulled out. And like I said, guys, with a little bit of moisture, maybe a little bit of rain or more wet grass, all of this would have held on to that moisture and it would have rotted this deck right through. And because our customer brought his equipment to Eliminator Performance to get serviced, basically he prevented himself from uh, having a larger bill down the road. Okay, so here's our uh, sharpened blades. We got both blades on. And like I said, guys, you only need a little bit of nickel anti-seize uh, a little bit goes a long way with that stuff, so I'm going to get the nuts back on, get them torqued down, and uh, that's it, guys. Okay, so we got the uh, blades all torqued down now, and this is what I was talking about, guys. See this? So even though I was trying to be super careful, a little bit leaked through. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just take a rag, wipe down the whole deck, make sure that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of big uh, wet spots, and then I'm going to just go around the belt, making sure that uh, there's no... Uh, rust preventative on the uh, belt itself just to make sure that uh, everything's good to go and then I'll take this deck reinstall it into the machine it's super simple on these ones uh, the Toros have a wicked design uh, basically it's got a spring-loaded pin you just pull that you line it up to the to the hanger and you you clip it in and that's it and for the front piece uh, it's just a hanger that uh, you drop in so you would you know taking it off you would uh, undo those pins drop the back down slide the deck forward and then that bar comes out so putting it back on, you want to slide the deck forward, drop that bar in, slide it back so it locks in place, and then uh, you hook up your pins at the back. Now I might have to take a couple 2x4s just to uh, prop up the back end, but uh, that's about it, guys. Okay, so like I said, guys, we got the, uh, the front bar hooked up. Now before you do that, you want to make sure you have your uh, belt hooked up around the pulley. And to do that, uh, Toro's come up with a pretty ingenious uh, idea here, and basically, Here's your uh, belt keeper. That just makes sure that your belt doesn't slip off. Uh, to get that off and on, all you gotta do is push in on it. And uh, this little nub here coming out of the frame uh, is where it goes into. So the one end of your uh, belt keeper just kind of uh, pops into one of those holes. And uh, it, the only thing that holds it in there is tension. So basically you just have to push on this side of the bar and it'll pop out. You can rotate it forward and down just enough to get your belt off. And then when you go ahead to put your belt back on, uh, you get your belt back on, and then you just pop that belt keeper right into place. And the only other thing that I had to hook up was the blade engage cable, and uh, that hooks up right there. You guys can see it just pops in, and there's a little retaining clip that goes onto it, and uh, that hooks up onto the bar, which is your idler pulley. So uh, basically when you go to engage your blade with that handle there, you pull that, that pulls your uh, idler pulley back farther, which puts tension on your belt, which engages your blade and transfers the power from the engine pulley 
to your deck blades. So the only thing I have to do now is uh, line these pins up with these hangers here and uh, these pins go into the bottom hole on those hangers so both side guys basically you just pull that out you drop the hanger in and you pop that back in and it's done. Well guys that's it this thing's ready to go back to the customer uh, I tested it out it works great like I said it ran good before we got it we didn't have to do anything to the carburetor basically this was just a tune-up for uh, oil change and uh, oil filter fuel filter you know so it was basically just preventative maintenance so if you guys enjoyed the video leave me a thumbs up think about subscribing you can click here to subscribe you can click over here to uh, check out one of my previous videos and as always guys thanks for watching